in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed An encounter that will change my life following online make sure you are praying give us encounters oh God hallelujah second prayer point father let there be a fresh wind of revival and awakening upon the bunny island once again raise people men and women that you will pour out your spirit upon in mighty ways is someone praying Once again, visit this land. Visit our families. Visit the youth. Visit the elderly. Let Jesus be lifted once again upon this island. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, help us tonight. Let there be such mighty outpouring of your spirit. Let there be miracle signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, we pray that the rain of revival will fall upon this place. Do something that will bring the name of Jesus glory tonight. Father, we pray that you meet every need in this place. And let Jesus be glorified. Amen and amen. God bless you again. Please be seated. Let me honor every servant of God here, the men of God who pastor and lead this church. Thank you, sirs. The pastors, servants of God, men and women of God, veterans of the gospel across this entire land. We bless you. We honor you. We recognize what you are doing for the kingdom and we do not trivialize your sacrifices. Amen. I have a calling and I have been sent primarily to the body of Christ. My assignment is to see to it that within the limit of the grace of God committed unto me that I'm able to supply the dimensions of grace and spiritual illumination that territories would require as far as loving Jesus, living for him, birthing revivals, transforming territories and preserving legacies concerned. And so every time God gives me the privilege and the honor 
of traveling around whether in this nation across the african continent or around the world it remains my singular honor to see that i avail myself to be used by god in whatever capacity he would want to plant a fire that will burn and without leave even those who came for that meeting and when he grants me the unique honor of now visiting, ter visiting territories not just churches or ministries i take it as a bigger assignment because then i have the privilege of speaking to the entire body of christ within that region and i take it as a lifetime opportunity Tonight is one of such times. In fact, the entire conference has been a moment in history. And I pray that it will not be forgotten in a hurry. In the name of Jesus. Adonai, you're the Lamb of God. You are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my heart. Adonai. This is our prayer that your kingdom will come and that it will reign in this place in the name of Jesus Christ. Preserving territorial revivals. This is my teaching tonight. Preserving territorial revivals. Like I said earlier on, I had the opportunity to visit grave sites, had the opportunity to visit century old monuments that remain upon your land as a testament that once upon a time there was a mighty move of God. I had the honor of being given an orientation and a throwback, relieving history from person after person, how the gospel came to your region, how the gospel went across the globe, how the gospel went across the nation of Africa and the entire Nigeria and the role that this very island played in sustaining that fire phenomenal and so I thought by the Spirit of God that it would be good to contribute to that fan of revival fire by sharing with us the secrets I have learned through my encounters with the Holy Spirit the secrets I have learned by gleaning on the wisdom of uncommon mentors, the secrets I have learned from men and women who have been used by God to fan the flames of revival across this nation, across Africa, and across the globe. In every generation, and every once in a while through history, you will find out that individuals and territories would experience a massive move of the Spirit there would be such times we call them awakenings when certain individuals from a territory would seem to be handpicked by God and God would move mightily and unusually through their lifetime in Nigeria here we have all kinds of people beginning from the fathers and patriarchs of faith Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder of your regions here, James Johnson, Apostle Babalola, you name them, all through modern history. And then across the globe, you talk about men and women who have been mightily used by God. A few people have written about them, we call them God's generals. Almost every territory has men and women who at one point or the other, they experienced the power, the fire, the grace of God. And they moved in such dimensions that brought glory to the name of the Lord. Here's what the Bible says. That the things that are written are for time. They are for our learning. 
so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope but then the challenge with these moves of God is that strangely so as powerful as they come mighty miracles the moves of God bringing spiritual awakenings bringing industrial revolutions a point comes when it looks like the succession system is not mastered and when those people either pass on to glory or by reason of age and the depletion of strength the move goes down and you would look at some of those regions and never believe that God once moved we only have the monuments to convince us not the impact again but the monuments there are places across the globe today across the Middle East some of those places were the places where this scripture was written and yet you go there today and you don't find anything that looks like God if you are fortunate you will meet gravestones you would meet ancient inscriptions that may archaeologically convince you that an event like this happened and if we do not learn what I'm about to teach tonight may God forbid that Christ tarries and then a time comes when we come to this island and cannot find anything God may God forbid it that once upon a time or a time to come will pass through this island and see that there's no revival no awakening God consciousness is empty someone shout no way Are we together many moves of God have come and have gone from the world's revival the Azusa Street revival the healing revival the charismatic revival they brought with them several dimensions of God but for some reason it seems like the potency of these revivals become lost because the system of preservation has not been studied we have learned how to start revivals but we have not learned how to sustain the impact this is my assignment tonight to show us a mystery that can leave revivals and cause their impact to be transgenerational if you're with me please say amen, amen. two scriptures Judges chapter 2 we're going to start our reading tonight with a very disturbing and very troubling rendition Judges chapter 2 from verse 10 Judges chapter 2 from verse 10 okay we have it projected now pay attention please I'm reading to 19 and also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers and there arose listen carefully another generation after them which knew not the Lord nor yet the works which he had done for Israel next verse and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam we're reading to 19 and they forsook the Lord God of their fathers which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger we're still reading and they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashrod. these were ancient gods and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them and he sold them into the hand of their enemies round about so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies we're reading to 19 whithsoever they went out the hand of the Lord was against them for evil as the Lord had said and as the Lord has sworn unto them and they were greatly distressed nevertheless the Lord raised up judges hallelujah which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges. But they went. What's the word there? Warring after other gods. And bowed themselves unto them. 
and turn quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in. Take note, which their fathers walked in. Obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not do so. 18. And when the Lord raised them up, judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. The last scripture, 19. The Bible says, and it came to pass when the judge was dead. What happened? They returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down to them. And they ceased not from their own doings, nor from their own stubborn way. This is a very tragic rendition. That once upon a time, the nation of Israel saw the outstretched arm of God. They had mighty visitations from the Lord. But then they went back into their ways of depravity. And God gave them to the hands of their enemies and they cried. And in his mercy, he raised judges for them. And whilst these judges were alive, they guided them in the way of the Lord. But notice there was one mistake with this scripture. All the judges and all the people had no succession system. So when those who were custodians of what God was doing, the moment they died, the people returned again to their captivity, their depravity, etc. The Bible clearly tells us in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that we have been made unto our God a kingdom of priests and we shall reign. It is his desire that we reign in life, serving the purposes of God and seeing to it that Christ is enthroned and Christ is glorified. Now, there are two things I want to teach you before we get into the discourse tonight. Please look up. The gospel has two sides. There are two sides to the gospel. The first side to the gospel is the message that saves. There is the gospel as the message that saves an individual. The message that saves. What is that message? A revelation of the love of the Father revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Man being the object of that sacrifice alongside creation. To the end that whosoever believes in that sacrifice, there is a reward for believing that sacrifice. It's actually the gift of God. It's called the life of God. Eternal life we call it. Are we together? So the message that reveals the love of the Father through the sacrifice of Jesus. Man being the object of that sacrifice alongside creation our assignment is to believe that report and we receive eternal life to our spirits but the second side of the message or the gospel is an ideology that enthrones christ across a territory and across society there is a dimension of the gospel that is not just for an individual edification a dimension of the gospel that should affect society should affect territories that means not only an individual should be saved territories as a whole should come under the influence of the government of the Christ for a very long time and for many years we did very well in the first area we help people through evangelism to receive this gift of God but we neglected our territories and so we had individuals who loved Jesus but the territory became harsh and hostile to these individuals because we did not sustain the intelligence to bring our territories under the corporate influence of the government of the Christ the result many of those people became discouraged some of them became backslidden Christians 
And then when those who were the captains that spearheaded the move of God now departed to be with the Lord, the influence of the territory became so strong that the personal convictions of the people dwindled. So you find pockets of Christians across a territory and yet that territory does not name the name of the Lord. Are we blessed? The message that saves individuals then an ideology that transforms territories. I commented on this yesterday. I'd like to repeat myself again. When I came into your territory from the NLNG and then all to other territories, I was amazed at the level of dexterity and culture and order and civility that surrounds your territory. Are we together? There seems to be a modus operandi that brings a sense of responsibility and order. I commend and I confess that you people are a very orderly and a very disciplined people, corporately. It's quite unusual, especially because Africa as a territory, we seem to not be compliant. How you people got to this state is worthy of commendation. But there is a sense of dexterity, obedience. I saw cars waiting for cars. I saw cars waiting for pedestrians. And it was as though you are not in this nation. Now, the reason is because there is a modus operandi. Are we together now? The territory came under the influence of a modus operandi. And for as long as you subscribe to it, it produced an ideology that is now benefiting all and sundry. Are we together? This is how the gospel is. There is a mind control system that the gospel should carry that should make everyone within that territory and then the territory itself to come to the obedience of Christ. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Second scripture, 1 Kings 18, 21. 1 Kings 18, 21. Elijah came unto the people. Elijah was tired and fed up of their dilly darling. And he came up to the people and said, How long hold ye between two opinions? He said, If the Lord be God, follow him. And if Baal, then follow him. The Bible says, And the people answered him not a word. When you read all the scriptures, he called for a contest at Mount Carmel where the prophets of Baal were given an opportunity from morning till night to call upon the name of their Lord. If peradventure, he would answer. And they called and caught themselves, lacerations everywhere, and yet he would not answer. And the Bible says, when it was a time for the evening sacrifice, Elijah, having put the sacrifice upon the altar, set up 12 stones, he called upon the God of heaven. And he came down answering by fire, licked up the water. And that day, the God of the Bible, the God of the Hebrews, enthroned himself again as Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. There are a few principles, six of them, very quickly. I may not be teaching, I'll just mention them and say a word on them because I'm hoping and praying that one day, some young man, some young woman will stumble across this message when they are studying what is the prophetic blueprint of God for Bonny Island. And that by the Spirit, they will come across this message and listen to it and say, oh, this is a key and a roadmap to what God intends to do and how revivals will be transformed. There are six keys that I've learned from my life, from the privilege of uncommon mentorship, the opportunity to have studied revivals. I'm a student of revivals. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few people in their lifetime who were mightily used by God across the earth and have studied the references and the books of many. I've studied the revival in Nigeria. I've had the honor and the privilege of listening to people who were mightily used by God or knew others who were used by God in close proximity. And like a spiritual archaeologist, I have been able to piece together six keys that I believe any territory and any individual that works in compliance with these keys, you will always preserve the move of God within that territory. 
I pray that the Lord will open our eyes and grant us understanding. Are you ready? Key number one. You want to preserve the move of God territorially across Boni Island and across your region. The first key is prayer. Key number one is prayer. The priesthood ministry of prayer. You will never be able to preserve the move of God in a territory when there is a shortage of men and women who understand the mystery of warfare and intercession in prayer. When I talk of prayer, the kind of prayer that births revival in a territory is not just prayer for petition and request. There is a dimension of prayer that is responsible, listen carefully, for awakenings. It is the dimension of prayer called prophetic intercession and warfare. There must be people always from different churches across different plains here within this region. There must be an emergence of men and women who understand the art of holding on to the four horns of the altar. Men and women who know how to lift up the incense of prayer so that the purposes of God will continue and will advance in your region. Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. We'll begin our reading from verse 23. Ezekiel chapter 22 from verse 23. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, we're reading to 30. Son of man, say unto her, thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. 25. There is a conspiracy of her prophecies in the midst thereof. Like the roaring lion ravening the prey, they have devoured souls they have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made how many widows in the midst thereof. Uh -huh. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have not put difference between holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. And I am profaned among them. Please continue. Go ahead. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves. Ravening the prey. To shed blood and to destroy souls. To get dishonest gain. 28. And her prophets have dubbed them with untempered mortar seeing vanity and divining lies unto them saying thus saith the Lord when the Lord has not spoken 29 the people of the land have used oppression and exercise robbery they have vexed the poor and the needy yea they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully 30 will add 31 also and I sought for them among them that should hedge, should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Next verse. Therefore, because I did not find prophetic intercessors in the land, I have poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads saith the Lord God. Destruction becomes imminent for any territory when there are no prophetic intercessors. Men and women who understand the art of prayer, warfare in the spirit and intercession that the purposes of God be advanced. It says right from the days of John the Baptist and even until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence shall take it by force. Jeremiah 29 and verse 7. Please pay attention. The first key to preserve the awakening of the spirit 
upon this territory for your children and your children's children is the priesthood ministry of prayer, intercession, warfare. And seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. When a territory is troubled, the trouble will eventually affect you. That was what Mordecai told Esther. He said, do not think you are in the palace. And because things are glorious in the palace, Haman is plotting to kill us. When he is done with that territory, they will discover you are a Jew. And he will come for you. There needs to be a reimagining of prayer groups, prayer chains, men and women raised by God who know how to pray. The, the price for revival is genuine prayer with fasting, not just people who are saying, Lord, give me tea, give me bread. He wants to bless you, no doubt. But men who can pray, like John Knox who would pray over Scotland. Oh God, give me Scotland or I die. Oh God, give me Scotland or I die. There must be men and women who are selfless. It's not just the issue of I am president of a group. Nameless, faceless people. And I tell you by prophecy, God will begin to raise men you see from among you. Some of them are ordinary people. No name. Ordinary mothers. Every evening you will stand behind a tree. Shake it. Lord, preserve your walk in Bonnie Island. This is why God brought some of you here to confirm to you that what you are doing is not in the flesh. There are mothers that will arise. Even in old age, grace will be given to you like Anna the prophetess. And you will stand in prayer night and day. Lord, let evil not prevail over the territory. And every time the hand of Satan wants to come, there is a mother, there is a father, there is a young man and woman praying and say, no way, we are the gatekeepers of this territory and we build a spiritual fortification. Evil cannot thrive when we are alive. Listen very carefully. There is a price for the move of God. The price of genuine prayer. When men do not pray, Evil thrives in a territory. When men do not pray, occultism thrives in a territory. When men do not pray, injustice thrives. Do you know why? The Bible says the heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. So if anything is going wrong in our territory, it's a, terri it's a testament of our mismanagement. No matter how technologically advanced we are, Please hear me. There are forces assigned over territories to thwart the purposes of God. There are familiar spirits that grow with many and master the patterns. They create behavioral patterns that sabotage the destinies of people. So you find a territory with widespread irresponsibility. You find a territory where the men are irresponsible and it's the women that serve the men. You find a territory where the young people are not respectful. You find a territory with a widespread manifestation of misbehavior and all kinds of things. There are spirits. There must be men and women who must learn how to command power from the realm of the spirit. If you want to see God move in Bonnie Island, follow the path of the great patriarchs bishop samuel ajayit crowder james johnson these people did not start with preaching they started with prayer i had the opportunity to see their pulpits i had the opportunity to see how they called upon the god of heaven and even at the threat of their lives like the three hebrew boys they refused to bow to the forces of the land 
they commanded some of your kings by the reason of the power they commanded in the heavens. They made some of your kings to accept Jesus openly. Today you are benefactors of that prayer. I pray for you. Whatever has killed your prayer life, whatever has brought you down to a point of spiritual coldness, may that fire be fanned aflame tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The move of God will always suffer when people do not pray. When it's time for prayer meetings, carry your children. Don't say they are too young. You will not be here forever. Respectfully speaking, this is the mistake that the West made in the 60s and 70s when the move of God was so strong. Many of the parents were in that revival but they forgot their children. Remember what Pharaoh told Egypt. He said, we'll let you go, but leave your children behind. They said, no way. We are all going. Anything that makes you to neglect your children in carrying them along, one generation of neglect will return Satan back to a territory. Please listen to me tonight. This is a prophetic message to the body of Christ. One generation of neglect 30 days without prayer was all that the parliament in Babylon needed. 30 days without prayer and a house of assembly sat down to pass a decree. All Satan needs is that short a time and he will wreak havoc over a territory. Men and women who know how to pray. Once it is night, you wake up with a sense of responsibility. Not just give me bread, give me tea. Oh God, the other day you gave me five naira. When will you increase it to 15 naira? There is a place for that. But I'm talking of men who would carry the map of Boni Island. Put it on your prayer altar. Shakatos kapata. Embreketes keta. Lord revival. Lord fire. Lord salvation. Let the fire of God fall on the streets. Fall in schools. Fall everywhere. This is how revivals are birthed. This is how revivals are preserved. You must trust God for grace to conquer gluttony. Gluttony, you must trust God to return back to the old pattern, the ancient art of prayer with fasting, not prayer while browsing, not prayer while picking a call that you turn the plates in your house upside down and your house becomes an altar where angels are used to coming and going because they found out that a, an altar of prayer has been built from that place. Someone open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray. Lord, it's time for a move once again in Bonny Island. Thank God for what we have seen. Thank God for the sacrifices of the fathers and the veterans in the land. Once again, oh God of heaven, arise like the mighty God that you are. Blow in power, blow in power upon Bonny Island. Are you praying? Shake it up, cut up, cut up, cut up. Embra kete kos katale katesh. Rakata prate katos kapaka topras kotosh. Embra kotos koto parate kate pras kata. Pray, don't be tired. You're here for a conference tonight. Lord, let there be a restoration of apostolic signs, apostolic wonders. Do again, oh God, what you did before. Heal again, oh God, the way you healed before. Deliver again, oh God, the way you delivered before. Change again, oh God, the way you changed before. We are available vessels. We will give you no rest until you establish Jerusalem as a prayer. You are the 
the covenant keeping God You are the covenant keeping God One more time. You are, you are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Please hear me. Pela shalas kade shalabranda kade baharakatus skada baranta skade belekotusi prahaskiya. Pela baruta skada branda kade belekotia. Listen to me. Listen. I challenge every family here. Turn your house into a prayer altar. There has to be a space for a divine visitation in your house. As a father, as a mother, let your children know prayer by watching you pray. Not by learning it in Sunday school. Let them learn prayer from you. That whilst they are sleeping in the middle of the night, they hear daddy taking away the cloak of CEO taking away the cloak of a professional wear your priestly regalia walk from room to room laying hands on the children oh you will be part of the move of God you will be part of the fire of God lay hands on them make it decrease prophesying upon the land Hallelujah. Please sit down. Let's hurry up. So the first key for the preservation of the move of God across a territory is the priesthood ministry of prayer. You can sit down, my dear people. Just focus on your writing. Number two, very quickly. The second key, if you want to see the move of God preserved in your territory, there must be a regular convergence of believers within this territory to be trained, to be equipped, to be mentored, and to be empowered. There must be platforms across your territory that allows for a regular convergence of believers whether it is church activities whether it is non-denominational activities there has to be a platform that allows for regular convergence of believers for the purpose of training discipleship mentorship and empowerment community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values when people live in isolation to a larger body of truth, it becomes easy for them to be a prey. Community living helps you and gives you the strength to sustain kingdom values. Is someone learning tonight? The second key, a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained, to be equipped, to be mentored, and to be empowered Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 down to 47 this was the blueprint that the early church received this was the blueprint that the early church handed down to us Acts chapter 2 please from verse 42 help us media Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrines and fellowship and in breaking of bread 
and in prayers. Notice the content of their gathering. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Down to 47. Next verse. And all that believe were together. All that believe were Talk to me. All that believe where community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. So when you are weak, you will hear your neighbor praying and he can encourage you. He can tell you, let's go to church. And you want to give an excuse, there is no fuel. He says, no problem, my car is available. Community living will crush the spirit of backsliding and complacency. The Bible says, and all that believe were together and had all things come on uh-huh and sold their possession and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need two more verses and they continuing how long please talk to me continuing there has to be a daily contact it may not be so for church but the family unit is the basic unit where there must be a daily contact that makes for continuity of spirituality. Many of you remember this is how we were raised though. Night prayers or morning prayers or both. A time when they share the truth. Now you have children reproduce that same result. Don't just give them secular education alone. You must connect them to the God that lifted you to this level. They should not know book alone. They must know God in the beginning. God. We live in a world today where when a child is educated, master's PhD, no matter how deprived he is spiritually, we say it's all right. It's just that he doesn't know God, but he's a very serious person. What is our yardstick of seriousness? In one day, the powers of darkness can sweep that destiny. And every labor of 10, 20 years can be over. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Are we together now? They continuing daily with one accord in the temple and in breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. As a result, 47, watch this. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church. How long? Because they met daily, he added daily. If they meet yearly, he will add yearly. He will meet you at the frequency of your seriousness. Number one, prayer. Number two, the regular convergence of believers to be trained to be mentored do you know the reason why we have a lot of young people with zeal and passion and power but we have a plethora of variations and a lot of inconsistencies because people had a lot of zeal but there was no structural system for mentorship either because those who went ahead of them did not have time they were busy doing ministry and they neglected the young people or because of rebellion on the part of the young people to not submit themselves to learning either ways will still land a generation in trouble when it has to do with raising people nobody outgrows the need to be trained to be guided, to be mentored at whatever age when it has to do with the matters of the kingdom. This is why God gave local assemblies in every territory so that believers can converge and learn the ways of God, understand the principles of God and be discipled. Discipleship is the platform that allows for the communication of doctrine doctrine represents the exact body of truth allocated for the methodical growth and transformation of believers within a territory now please look at me if you have can i use two gentlemen two gentlemen just come let me use you you stand here you stand here or you can go back sir let me use this one come 
Watch this. If this guy is a... You have a lot of engineers here, so let me use an engineering term. If this man is an engineer working with, say, NLNG, and this man is an engineer working with, say, Shell, look up. Did you know that even if they never meet, it's possible for them to meet one day and they are discussing like colleagues because the manual that was used for their training was similar even though they may never know themselves by the time they meet the differences will not be far because what they learned was not their opinion so how come a christian in kano or a christian in maiduguri or a christian in lagos and another christian in ghana when two of them meet you wonder how they got born again who they gave their lives to it tells you that there is a corruption in the manual not necessarily corruption in the zeal the template for mentorship is wrong we should meet as believers and if i say bless you you shouldn't ask me what are you saying this is a language of the kingdom i want to sow a seed and you say this is strange i don't know what you are talking about can we pray and fast and you say no 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 i don't know what this means let's go to church you say why today is tuesday you see that kind of thing the disparity in the quality of believers enthronement if you do not believe in the ministry enthronement if you do not believe in the ministry of the holy spirit if you do not believe in the virgin birth if you do not believe in the power of the word and the power of the holy spirit to transform and guide believers as they search on if you do not believe in god's agenda global missions of winning the world if you do not believe in influence the strategy that enthrones christ across a, a, the a strata if you do not believe in all of these things then you do not believe he is coming back you are not a christian it's as simple as that The cure for this disparity of errors is to have a methodical template. Maybe not the same. Right now there are vaccines for COVID-19 by different companies. But principally, I believe that the pharmacology of those vaccines are similar. Otherwise you would not be allowed to administer because it's the same human beings. If you give me an option to take this one or that one, it means that the pharmacology is not so different as far as how it will work in my body. I should be able to attend any church within Boni and know that my Sunday service will not be a waste. I should be able to attend any service and know that in that service there will be prayer, that there will be worship, that there will be giving, that there will be the word. That the world will be targeted at winning souls, transforming believers, and empowering people. Regardless what sermon, it must contain these things. A provision for sinners to be saved, a provision for believers to be transformed, and a provision for believers to be empowered. The greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation. The greatest need of a believer is transformation. The greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment. This must be captured upon our pulpits, regardless the church, regardless the assembly. Are we together? Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you. Number three. Are we learning something tonight? The third key that preserves revivals and the move of God across our territory is that there must be an open display of real miracles signs and wonders that go beyond the church wall there must be a manifestation of the wonder working power of God in miracles signs and wonders beyond the church walls oh was I blessed this morning as I heard the stories of men and women we were told stories of people who defied death in your land we were told stories of people who defied all kinds of things. Men who spoke to your seas and gave them borders by prophecy to not cross beyond. 
there must be a restoration let me tell you this a territory that does not see Jesus in action will not believe Jesus is alive a territory that does not see Jesus in action will not believe that Jesus is alive John 4 48 please give it to us John 4 48 read with me if you are a Christian and you can see it projected ready please read one to read Jesus said unto him except ye see signs and wonders ye will not believe we live in a world today that is full of options options that dare the Christian faith to the face we must present a Jesus with proofs we must present a faith life that is attractive enough to compel all and sundry the woman said come see a man that told me what I have done when one madman in Gadara one madman God delivered single-handedly his miracle was responsible for the salvation of ten cities one miracle Why are miracles important? They create convictions in the heart of communities. Miracles create convictions. They help people know that Jesus is alive. Even if they refuse to acknowledge his lordship, they go back with their hearts burning within them. Are we blessed? This is why we need the anointing. Acts chapter 19 from verse 11. Acts 19, let's hurry up. Verse 11. And God wrought special miracles through the hands of the inhabitants of Bonnie Island. Hmm. Go ahead, media. Next verse. So that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them the evil spirits went out of them 13 and certain of the vagabond Jews exorcist took it upon themselves to call over them which had an evil spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus saying we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached they thought it was magic and there were seven sons of one Skiva, a Jew, a chief of the priests, which did so. What happened to them? The evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. Joshua Selman I know. He says, who are you? That means while you are praying and preparing your spirit, there is a register in the spirit that is showing your consistency. It is not only angels that are seeing it, demons are seeing it too. You don't just come on stage and say, be healed, be delivered. Just because you read it in the Bible, there must be a track record of consistently building yourself in the spirit. Let's read on. We're reading to 20. Please give it to us quickly. The Bible says, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded imagine that kind of reproach to the name of the lord that we are in a meeting like this and you see me running out naked to the streets of bonnie what happened they said two fierce people under the influence of spirits and people outside keep hearing jesus 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 and joshua selman is running out naked they say i i better run out naked than to die what a reproach to the name of the lord the Bible says this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus and fear fell upon them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds 19 many of them which used curious acts brought their books together and burned them before all men 
and they counted the price of them and it was 50,000 pieces of silver worth of magic books. 50,000 pieces of silver worth of magic books because there was an open display of miracles, of signs and of wonders. So mightily grew the word of God and it prevailed. I've had the honor and the privilege of praying for all kinds of people, Christians, Muslims, free thinkers, traditionalists, and every time they come to me, they don't care whether they are Christians or Muslims. They just say, we have heard. Let me tell you this, in the presence of real results, people will keep every excuse and every prejudice. The reason why people bring all those things is because they don't trust that your results will work. Are we together? Open display of real miracles. One of the things you're going to be receiving tonight by the grace of God is an impartation of grace for signs and for wonders. There has to be people in. We need to be hearing from all over this country. This happened in Boni. Just when we're about to reconcile, we hear that another one has happened that a popular madman on your street while fellowship was happening he made a mistake and touched the gate of the church just the gate the power of God electrocuted him there and you came and met him in his sound mind as that testimony is going all over Port Harcourt then we hear again that three dead people from different points came back to life let me tell you this you will pull a level of force that you wake up in the morning and find people kneeling in front of churches and say I don't know who is the pastor of this church but I know I will not rise up from my knees the God who did this it may he come and change my life listen to me a hospital never goes to look for patients they just put enough equipment and patients from everywhere even if they cannot stand they carry them and take them to that hospital when you become like that hospital, men would defy everything and they will look for you. May it be like that for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number four. What is the fourth key? As far as preserving revivals is concerned. The fourth key is the intentional mentorship of younger believers and younger ministers for the purpose of legacy and succession. The intentional mentorship of younger believers and younger ministers for the purpose of legacy and succession. Bonnie Island, do not let your fathers transit in the faith if Christ tarries without raising and tracing sufficient young people. And the key is not to wait until you are old. I received a very humbling orientation one of your plans here that to shut it down for 30 days it takes at least two years of thorough preparation that's how it must be fathers of faith in the land may I beseech you by the message of God do not wait until you are 50 60 70 when you do not have that strength again no let's begin to train the young ones from infancy have you seen how they train footballers in many countries many of you are football fans you notice that when the professionals are coming there are some young boys that also wear jerseys have you seen that happen those young boys you see are the great footballers soccer players of tomorrow they don't wait until those ones retire right from infancy they identify them give them scholarships while they are schooling they are training we must employ that same strategy there must be people who are anointed to do children ministry in Bonny Island and don't laugh at them and feel they are just children that person you are pushing away may be Samuel the prophet tomorrow whose word will not fall to the ground and oh Eli if you are not sensitive to train Samuel when you are gone Israel would have no priest and no prophet one of the major assignments of a true father of faith and a true veteran of the gospel is that you must look back 
and see people you are reproducing your ideologies, your values, your disciplines, and your trainings on. At every level, you can start. A father should not wait until his son is 18 years before he starts telling him this is right and wrong. In our stubborn world today, by 18 years, most things have become like metals in the head of the children. At age two, three, as you take your offering and take a seed, you give that same child, Junior, hold yours, watch what daddy is doing. Daddy is going to sow into the, the, the life of a man of God. And you see the little boy do it. I come from the north and they practice this very strongly in Islam. Right from infancy, they begin to raise them with such fierce, unrivaled discipline. We must restore the mentorship of young people. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. It says the same. Commit thou to faithful men. Who shall also be able to teach others. It's the reason why you must allow people go through process in life. So that they can learn the pathway. Don't just give people results without experiences. Because what they learn in the process is greater than the result. It is from the knowledge of the process they can mentor others. Are we together? When you are about to pray, let the children pray too. They can break their fast by 12 or even if it's 11 o'clock. But let them participate no matter how small. Let them be part of that history of growth and transformation. Train up a child, the Bible says, in the way he should go. That means you must know the way yourself, the way he should go. He says, and when he is old, he will not turn away from it. The next reverence, Bishop Ajayi Crowders, James Johnson's, the next T.L. Osborne's, the next Kenneth Higgins, the next Ayo Babalola's must start their process in Boney Island immediately. Immediately. Teach them to sit down and read books. When they are loitering around, tell them, young man, I love you and I love your destiny. You say you have the call of God upon your life. Your first assignment is not invitations to preach. Your first assignment is the cave of Adulam. That's where men are made. The stage is not for training. The stage is for execution. Go and sit down. Yes, I know you are a great man of God. Run away from anybody who does not have a history of service that built him. People don't just become. Many years ago, I had the honor and the privilege of playing this keyboard you are seeing. I used to play for it a, a prison ministry. They were part of the people who went to preach for Basanjo later in the years in prison. We didn't just become what we became. No. From one service, you are in a subgroup. You are joining like these gentlemen now, doing something. One day in your little group, they will say, help us close the service with prayer. Then you will now bring what happened in your secret place to that prayer group. You will pray for 10 minutes and everybody begins to sense there's something about this man. Next time they will say, okay, we give you 15 minutes. And while that happens, God will be speaking to your pastor and say, the next time you see this man, when there is a meeting outside, give him five minutes. That's how people are trained. All this balloon success of getting up overnight is the reason why a lot of people rise up and crash down. When God lifts you, he supports you. But when you jump up, you will come down. Let us help younger ministers, but not condemn them. Let me speak to the fathers respectfully. The younger ministers will have a lot of mistakes. The younger ministers will have a lot of error. They have zeal, but they may not have wisdom. We must have the heart and the patience because us too, God helped us. We learned on the job. He trained us, but nobody's ever trained enough. As you start, you will see the need for adjustment in character, in discipline, in excellence. Let's not be too harsh on people who are coming up. 
They may have prayer, the grace to pray, the grace to prophesy, but you may see pockets of pride here and there. Don't discourage them. The grace is genuine. Just call them to order and adjust the excesses because in discouraging them, the devil will give them alternatives and tomorrow when they still become great without your influence, they will fight you. When I was about to start ministry, I wrote a letter to so many men of God across the globe. Then internet was not really, and then phones was, but I wrote a letter to many ministers. I believe for justifiable reason, many of, many of them probably did not even reach them. But there was one man who replied me back. He replied me handwritten, and he became an uncommon mentor up until his death, Dr. Miles Monroe. Right from Bahamas, a young boy wrote him. I said, this is what God wants to make out of my life. And I was surprised when the post office reached me. And I went and I saw a letter, not that a secretary wrote and he just signed. He wrote it by himself and signed. And I made up my mind, I said, Lord, as you lift me, grant me the grace that no matter how busy I am, let me also be able to look back and see someone who is coming up because this thing is a relay others ran it and gave us whether we like it or not war betides a man who turns back and there is nobody to pass that baton to listen to me i had a meeting a few months i would say with a great servant of god in this nation and he was telling me that one of the veterans of the gospel i will not mention his name for respect and honor he began to lament and said our days are getting close and yet there are not sufficient young people to collect these buttons the grace that made us to lift wheelchairs on crusade grounds there are not faithful people who have been mentored are we going to go to the grave like that one of the men that i met before he went to be with the lord i remember he had met a lot of god's generals and i asked him i said what did they say and i remember him telling me he said Smith Wigglesworth told Lester Sumro, he says, when you are old, do not die with your mantle. He said, find young men, train them and pass this baton because you also, you received it. Let me tell you this, whether we like it or not, the cloud is already changing across Africa. Oh yes. In the next 10, 20 years, there will be a complete spiritual shift in the continent of Africa if Christ tarries. It's not prophecy. It's what wisdom and understanding of the nature and the principles of life. But the question is that will there be faithful men? Gehazi would have been the one to receive that grace from Elisha, but his unfaithfulness and his greed robbed him of that opportunity. Younger ministers, please hear me. Let me beseech you by the mercies of God. Humble yourself. Remain in the wilderness until your season of appearing. This itch for fame, this itch for popularity, we must love God beyond it. God will lift you beyond your imagination. Do you know when I started ministry, I hope I'm not wasting your time. When I started ministry, I stand before the God of heaven. I did not know that they used to give people anything called honorarium. That when you preach, they can package sugarcane and uh, mango and banana in a bag and say, thank you for coming. It was never the motivation. It was a desire to see Jesus lifted. A desire to see Jesus glorified. I didn't even know that men used to have protocol and PA to move around and secretary. No! We were driven by genuine hunger, unadulterated hunger. Please, let's be careful those we listen to. Let's be careful what we hear so that wrong seeds, maybe sincerely so, are not planted in us that corrupt our desire from day one. The purity of your motive is one of the determinants of your usability as far as territorial revival is concerned. You should not just be available, you must be usable. Number five. The third key for preserving 
territorial revivals is called influence. Now, this is the part that affects everybody. Influence. This has to do with God raising people and putting them in high places. Influence is very important. What is influence? The ability to compel men to buy into your ideologies and your value systems without using force, without using cruelty is called influence. The ability to compel men to buy into your value system, to buy into your ideologies without using force, without using cruelty is called influence. If you're with me, say amen. Influence is very important. Right for reference, we may not have the time to read it. Acts chapter 18 from verse 10 to 18. Acts chapter 18, 10 to 18. We need influence. You must pray that the leaders of the oil companies, the captains of industry, the kings and the nobles in the land, you must pray that God captures their heart. When a king is saved, his land is saved. When a CEO is saved, everybody under him is saved. Rather than trying to save people one by one, we must trust God to capture the kings of the territory so that the territory will come under the influence of Christ. The last point we're about to pray. What is the last key that preserves territorial revival? An open display of love. Hear me, Bonnie Island. Hear me, body of Christ. An open display of love without preference, religious biases, or cultural biases. An open display of love. Not just love to Christians. Not just love to church members. An open display of love without preferences, without religious biases, without cultural biases. Where we contribute to developing communities, we contribute to blessing people, Christians, Muslims, unbelievers alike. God is not the God of Christians alone. God is the God of all flesh. And we must be able to reveal the love of Jesus to a dying world in a practical and a definite way beyond the walls of culture, beyond the walls of religion. If we only show kindness and love to Christians, then there is a message we are communicating to non-Christians. There must be a dimension of the love of God that must be enjoyed by everybody in this island. So you can see a traditionalist and even though he's not born again and every opportunity you find you preach the gospel to him but then listen carefully you can shake him how are you god bless you my brother i'm going to church would you like to come no no no, no i'm not going to. anyway that's all right i'll pray for you you crack a joke not that you turn and say shame on you and he says shame on you too love There are miracles that happen to all. A major part of today was a downpour of rain. And I did not see the rain falling on Christian homes alone. I saw that the rain came upon everyone. Your sea here, your rivers are full of fish. The fish does not run away from unbelievers and go to Christian nets. It is the provision and the love of God to everyone. Whilst we ultimately pray and intercede and press that the entire land comes to the obedience of Christ, we must be able to show love without prejudice. We must show love, pure love, love for people. It may be the love of God that is displayed that will lead someone who has no business giving his life to Christ. But he will say, look, I am not a Christian but I love you. I've heard of what is happening in this church. I've heard of what is happening in this community. It's not just by giving food and all of that. 
just a, a warm display of love that someone in the office is crying and you come to him and say what is wrong and he says don't don't mind me this whole thing I'm tired of my life and you don't look at him and say you see shame on you I told you to come to Jesus you will pay the price alone day no you come to him and say look it doesn't matter what the problem is whether it's your fault or not let's cry together let me help you clean your tears before have you eaten and the person says wow what church did you say you attend I'll tell you that later let's talk about Jesus and your own life now and at the end of it he will get up and say for as long as I live I will follow your God your God will be my God this is where many times we fail as great people we do a lot of religious things but when it has to do with showing love we miss out on it six keys Bonnie Island practice these keys and even after 30 years when we come here we will still find find the fire of revival fanning and if they ask you how come you have sustained it just like you found the technology to sustain your environment and bring dexterity put it as a template for spiritual growth teach it to the young ones when the fathers are going and they see the clouds coming don't just give people money as an inheritance or land give them these precepts teach your children teach your children's children please rise up on your feet rise up on your feet we have a few minutes and we're done how many of you here came with your prayer request did you come with your prayer request is it all right if I ask the ushers to just collate it we're going to pray we have a few minutes we'll be very very fast if there are no ushers let's just have one or two volunteers and then just you can just all of you can pass your request to the the last aisle and then lift it up let someone just call just collect it don't worry nobody's reading your request is between you and the Lord but whilst that is happening please I'd like you to open your mouth in one minute and thank the Lord for what you have heard tonight if someone pray please don't be distracted pray 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 thank you Jesus for your word the entrance of your word gives light understanding to the simple Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises and as you say. Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your life. Prayer point number one. Father, we open up ourselves for a fresh revival across this land. Please lift your voice and begin to pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Are there people of prayer here? Lift your voice and pray to the king. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. 
Prayer point number two. You are going to pray for the church in Bonnie Island. Regardless the denomination, you are going to declare and say, Father, let us attain a level of unity. We may not agree in everything. Unity does not mean uniformity. It means having one spirit and knowing that regardless the pockets of differences here, our ultimate goal is to glorify Jesus and to enthrone him. Lift your voice and begin to cry for the unity of the body. The grace to look beyond our differences. The grace to forbear with one another. Are you praying? The grace to look beyond our differences. The grace to forbear with one another. Pray for every church. Pray for every man of God that lifts up the banner of the gospel laboring for Jesus in this land. Amen. Prayer point number three. You are going to pray for every family here on the island. Father, fresh fire on every family. Let it start from the homes. Pray for your children. Pray for your wife. Pray for your husband. Saved or unsaved. Are there people of prayer here? Please make sure you pray. Pray for revival in every home. An awakening. God consciousness. Every home, oh God, every home in this island, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. Finally, you are going to pray for yourself. Now listen carefully. In Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1. The Bible says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. What must die in your life for you to see the Lord? For some of you, it's pride that must die for you to see the Lord. For some of you, lust that must die to see the Lord. For some of you, greed must die to see the Lord. You're going to pray and say, Lord, I am available. Do not pass me as you move through this island. As you move through the nations, those following from whatever region, whatever nation, I'd like you to pray. Whatever you want to do, keep praying. Lord, you can do through me. Whatever you want to say. Lord, you can say through me whatever you want to bring. Lord, you can bring through me whatever you want to take. Lord, you can take. available go ahead and pray 
Cry to your maker, your God and my God, your King and my King. Wherever you want to change, Lord, you can change through me. Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. still praying don't be tired enter into a fresh consecration a dedication for the service of the king take away pride take away flesh let there be a circumcision of the spirit for the sake of the revival that is coming And bring the request. Are you praying? You are still praying for yourself. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, there are three or four things that we're going to do the next 10 minutes or so, and then we'll wrap up my final session with us. Number one, we have these prayers. It's a representation of the hunger, the needs of God's people. It says, unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. I want you to believe that these Egyptians you see today, that you will see them no more forever. Number two, I'm going to be praying and ministering the healing and the delivering power of God. Sadly, we may not have time to take testimonies because I understand you have a curfew and we must respect it. Number three, which is very important. There are graces and mantles that must fall on someone in this place this night. Maybe not everybody, but I know for sure there are people who came here. You must carry something. And then number four, I had a vision early this morning. I was sleeping, very tired and I was sleeping. And all of a sudden, in that vision I was taken to your sea and I saw what looked like a you know how fishes come out very big fish came out out of the river went back again came out the second time went back again came out the third time went back again and the spirit of the Lord told me this is the spirit that sits upon this territory and we pray because there is a prophetic push that this land must receive. A restoration of the life, the fire of the gospel, the passion and the hunger for the things of God. I told you there are spirits that interrupt the program of God. 
we do all this within the next 10 minutes very quickly please let your heart be desperate now let me say this if anyone is under the anointing whether you are an usher or not please be your brother's keeper anyone is under the anointing we may not have time to bring them out except if I ask so just help them to just lie quietly so that they don't injure themselves praise the name of the Lord are you ready to pray father that which must come upon my life tonight to change my destiny and to set me on fire I receive by faith lift your voice and pray please pray please pray there's gonna be a greater way hallelujah please stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to pray let's agree by faith and decree and declare that everything you wrote here may the power of God come to bring testimonies upon it lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and pray as I lay my hands over your requests Bonnie Island pray unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come Lord let there be transformation let there be miracles upon this land in the name of Jesus visit your people oh God bring them miracles bring them signs turn captivities around in the name of Jesus open closed doors bring glory to the name of Jesus bring glory to the name of Jesus bring glory to the name of Jesus financial blessings spiritual awakenings in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ like Paul would over the church in Ephesus and I call upon the God of my covenant that in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God everything written here that is a prayer request may it be turned tonight into a testimony let impossible situations be turned around in the name of Jesus for some of you on your way going home you will begin to meet some of these answers let impossible situations be turned around by the power of the Holy Spirit Oh God, may nothing written here remain in the life of your people. Every human agent that must be in partnership with God to make this request come to pass, we declare that connection is made now. Everything to be restored here, be restored in Jesus' name everything you are tired of seeing that needs to live your life I agree with you that as you wave it goodbye this night it waves you back forever in the name of Jesus Christ now please listen very quickly I want to make an altar call before we finish up the impartation there are people here up the balcony following online from whatever nation and right here outside inside you're saying apostle I do not want you to end this meeting and leave this town without giving me an opportunity for all of the sessions we've had people come to Jesus and let tonight be no different whilst you heard me preach whilst you heard me speak the Spirit of the Lord began to tell you that could it be that you are part of this great army that God is raising but it starts with a genuine encounter with Jesus. Two categories I'm going to call in one. 
you've never encountered Jesus genuinely as Lord and Savior. Knowing Jesus as healer does not bring you salvation. Knowing Jesus as a prophet does not bring you salvation. Knowing Jesus as a good man does not bring you salvation. Knowing Jesus as God does not bring you salvation. There is no other name under heaven, the Bible declares, that has been given unto men by which we must be saved. And then you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I gave my heart to the Lord, but for some reason, because of carelessness or the way my life has gone, the vicissitudes of life, I cannot truly say I'm standing strong in the faith. These two groups of people, I'm going to count one to five very quickly. Wherever you are, I want you to leave your seat up, down, outside, run and come and stand before the Lord here. A count of one to five. Don't wait for anyone to be the first. Win that war tonight. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. People are coming. If you're coming, come. Run to Jesus. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Keep coming. You're coming from the balcony. Please encourage them as they come very quickly. Come to Jesus unashamed. Come to Jesus intentionally. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. I want to come, but I'm afraid and I'm ashamed of my friends. Leave them and win that war tonight. Come and join them. Run to Jesus. Whosoever would come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Young, old, come to Jesus alike. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now please look at me. I salute every one of you for the noble decision to come stand before your maker. You're not standing before an altar. You're not standing before Joshua Selman. You're standing before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want you to lift your right hand. Every one of you lift it high to the heavens. And I want you to say this prayer of faith after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is here. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say it. Believe what you are saying. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I declare that I love you with all my heart. Tonight, I declare that Jesus is my Savior, is my Lord, and my King. I receive mercy and forgiveness from every sin and every guilt. And I also receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that from today and forever, I am a child of God. I am saved. I belong to Jesus and I will serve him all the days of my life no going back forward ever and backward never in Jesus name keep your hands lifted father I pray for these ones it's an honor to lift them before your throne tonight I ask in the name of Jesus according to the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven and I declare that you are partakers of the life of God. You receive the abundance of grace, even the gift of righteousness. And I declare that you reign in life. I plant in you a hunger for the things of God. And I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. The Lord will raise you and cause you to advance. You will serve him all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, please, all of you in concert, just move to my left, which is your right. There's a counselor waving their hands. Let's celebrate them as they go. Please celebrate them, everyone. Celebrate them as they go. 
Is that the best you can do? Celebrate them as they go. Are you ready to receive? The next few moments will be a very prophetic moment. And I want you to please pay attention. Many years ago, the Lord Jesus appeared to me. And in that encounter, I had very dramatic moments with the Lord Jesus Christ. I have seen him. I know he's alive. In that encounter, the Lord Jesus stretched his right hand towards me and light, marvelous light, came into my spirit. Many of you have listened to my teachings and you've heard me say how I did not die is a mystery that I will ask him when we get to heaven. And from that encounter, I did not know that it was an impartation. Many things began to happen in my life. Signs and wonders, angelic activities, supernatural access to revelation. And in a separate encounter, the Lord spoke to me and said, My son, from this day I give you my presence as a gift. And I saw this angel, mighty angel that stood before me and he said, he will walk with you. I said, what is his name? He said, he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. And then the Lord gave me an instruction in another encounter. He said, everywhere I send you to any nation, any continent, any region, there must be people in that place that the light that came from me to you there must be someone who must receive of that land, that light. And I have not failed in this assignment, not once. Every time he grants me the grace to travel to regions, help them please. There will always be one person. And so this, along with the impartation, there are graces that must fall upon you right now. There are anointings. Many of you are the custodians of the next revivals upon the Boni Island and from Boni Island across the nation, across the continent. I'm stretching my hands right now. Father, I'm seeing the number 38. There are 38 people here. The grace that is coming upon you is a, a grace for encounters and the secret place. Take that grace. Help them please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help them please. From the front to the back, my left to my right father in the name of jesus as many as must drink of this grace i declare may that fire fall on them now over bonny island revivalists arise over bonny island prophets prophetesses over bonny island intercessors arise by the spirit help them please is there a way you can bring these ones out? These ones I'm praying for. Please, if you can't, just bring them out. Just help them. I'm praying. Fire is falling on people right now. The Lord is releasing graces. There are women here. There are ladies that are going to be after the order of Deborah. Intercessors. Wailing women. Where are they? I stretch my hands. May that grace for intercession. Let it come upon you right now. Help them, help them, please. In the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. To break every chain, break every chain, break every Now, the grace for the evangelistic. There are people here, you are stepping into an anointing. Grace is the kind that men like T.L. Osborne stepped into from right from this land. I release that grace. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take 
take that fire. Help them, please. Take that fire in the name of Jesus. The front is filled. You don't have to bring them again. Just guide them where you are. Now, please hear me. Hear me. The Spirit of God is ministering to me. There are some of you, especially you are mothers. You may be elderly, but there is a grace God wants to restore. God will show you things in dreams and they will happen exactly as you saw. But it looks like that grace has been lost. Right now in the name of Jesus, we find that grace back to flames. We find that grace back to flames. Madam, this woman lifting her hands. Just lift your hands. I'm seeing what looks like oil coming on you. I stretch my hands right from here. Take that grace. Help her please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take that grace by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is releasing the spirit of prayer and intercession. There are prayer warriors from this encounter. I'm seeing the number 15, 1, 5. Prayer altars. We set you on fire now. On fire now. In the name of Jesus. Prayer altars. Men and women of prayer. Young men and women, intercessors, prophetic intercessors, arise by the Spirit. Pray down revival. Pray down signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Please pay attention. There are some of you, the grace for leadership is on you. Leadership, governance. You will be the ones to set the structure. The Daniels and the Josephs, I stretch my hands. Lord, I don't know where they are, but in the name of Jesus the Christ of God, anyone here with the grace for leadership, to see to it that the purposes of God is preserved even in government, I release that grace upon you. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. There are some of you who are called into ministry. Some of you are already in ministry. The fivefold now. There needs to be stamina. There needs to be endurance. I want to pray for you. End time ministry requires stamina. There are arsenals from hell that will arise. It takes discipline. It takes stamina. It takes diligence. The grace to serve God acceptably. The grace to serve God with fire. The fire for revival. The fire for signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. Let me pray for the sick now. Please lay your hands if you are trusting God for a miracle. You are trusting God for any kind of deliverance. We don't have all the time but I want to speak over you now. Believe God. Agree with me shouting a loud Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command every devil of infirmity, every spirit that is back of diseases and infirmities, be gone now in the name of Jesus. Be gone now in the name of Jesus. Now I declare from the crown of your head, to the soles of your feet be healed in the name of Jesus Amen. healing to your eyes in the name of Jesus 
healing to your feet in the name of Jesus. Receive strength in your body in the name of Jesus. Every blood condition here, we change that situation now. We change that situation now. Every problem with your hearing, I declare receive a miracle now. Every organ failure in your body, be healed in the name of Jesus. High blood pressure, be healed in the name of Jesus. Ulcers, be healed in the name of Jesus. Every blood related condition, be healed in the name of Jesus. Bone conditions, be healed in the name of Jesus. Heart conditions, be healed in the name of Jesus. Spinal cord conditions, be healed in the name of Jesus. Ulcers of all sorts, be healed in the name of Jesus. Now, whether I mention your case or not, every growth in your body, lumps around the breast area, around the stomach, fibroids, in the name of Jesus, we curse you by the God of heaven. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, may I request if you do not mind, if I can have just three or four ministers of the gospel here, maybe our reverend, our pastor, and two or three others. I want us to stand prophetically representing the church over Bonnie, and I want us to speak over the land, please. Please celebrate the fathers as they come. The reason why I ask the men of God to come is number one, to represent the unity of the body. But number two, to stand under a corporate anointing based on the vision that I saw. Every time I travel to regions, listen to me. I pray every time from the depth of my heart the prayer that Jesus prayed that they be one. The truth is that we may never exactly be one in terms of sameness of approach or even so aspects of doctrine but it's too small a reason to bring divisions this must be a new season of embracing ourselves regardless the limitations we are not all perfect we are a project but God has shown us mercy and we must carry that mentality and stand as one body one Lord one faith and even one baptism as the Bible teaches it is the same heaven all of us are going into and so we must stand to see that the gospel advances but we must stand as a corporate people and declare over the land and so I have asked the servants of God representing the men and women in this land to come stand with me in agreement as we pray this one prayer your assignment is to agree and release your faith as we shout amen are we in agreement Father, in the name of Jesus. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring before you this entire island, Bonny Island, a land that you have loved, an island that you have invested your power upon. We speak right now by the Spirit to the spirits that operate across this territory. Lift up your heads, O oh ye gates, and be ye lifted, everlasting doors. Let the King of glory have a triumphant entry over Bonnie Island in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The same way our fathers did. We stand tonight by the privilege of God's grace. We rededicate Bonnie Island and we declare Bonnie Island, you belong to Jesus. Bonnie Island, hear the word of the Lord. May Jesus find expression upon your land. We call Bonnie Island a center of revival a center of signs and wonders a center of prosperity a center of godliness a center of righteousness a center of unity a center of advancement a center of advancement hear me anyone who will divide the men and the women in this land we close the spiritual borders of this land against them in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of untimely death that attempts to sweep people in this land by the power that raised Christ from the dead and under the corporate anointing of the men of God we declare no more in Jesus name we pray for the women in this land you will no longer be widows prematurely. We pray for the men in this land. You will no longer be widowers prematurely. We pray for the children in this land. You will no longer be orphans prematurely. Father, every church, every assembly, every cathedral in this land, we dedicate it as a center for righteousness, a center for missions, a center for miracles, a center for mentorship. Lord, we stand in the spirit of the fathers of the land, the men and women who labor for the gospel here, Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder, James Johnson, and all the heroes whose blood is upon your land, we pray, let there be a move of the Spirit again. Let there be a move of the Spirit again. Raise apostles in this land. Raise prophets in this land. Raise evangelists in this land. Raise missionaries in this land. We pray for all the oil companies represented here. All of them. I may not know all of them by name, but we use NLNG, Shell, and all that are part of this program. No spirit will abort the program of God. Hear me. We pray for their leaders. I pray for your kings in this land. I pray for your chiefs in this land. In the name of Jesus, every royal kingdom and every palace will serve Jesus, the God of the Bible. I stand by prophecy. We command the earth to close over evil in this land. The reign of evil, vices that corrupt, vices that interrupt status quo we judge you by the God of heaven in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we pray that all the indigents and the inhabitants of Bonny Island will be responsible men and women in the name of Jesus Christ 
I pray for your young people. They will be responsible gentlemen. The grace to be established on time. I pray for your women. May they be responsible ladies that become mothers, that become grandmothers. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for the land. We command a reign of prosperity on your land like never before. We pray for the sea. We command the sea to come into abundance in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you. The Bible says the increase of the land is for all. Even the king is fed by what comes from the field. Let me pray for you. You can be in a good land and yet your life does not show it. Oh, earth, hear the word of the Lord. Yield your increase to the inhabitants of this land. Please hear me. I came into this land and you received me with honor. The Bible says, He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. By the privilege of the election of grace, I lift my voice to the God who called me and sent me. Standing in partnership with every man of God here. May the blessing that the Lord has placed on my life, may it rest upon your life. May shame and dishonor be far from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as the church, we stand to declare that the church is being built in this land and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ let the sound of war let the sound of ethnic violence let the sound of cultic clashes may they come to an end in this land By extension, we pray for the entire river state and we pray for the entire Niger Delta. We command and we prophesy peace. We command and we prophesy prosperity. We command and we prophesy increase in the name of Jesus. Therefore, standing together with the men of God here, we declare over the land of Boni that you are a blessed land and a prosperous land in the name of the Father in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit give Jesus a hand clap of praise hallelujah hallelujah go back listen to the teachings from yesterday night to this morning and even this night share it with your colleagues and more importantly the Bible says now that you know these things it says happy are you if you do them on behalf of Jesus Christ let me say a very big thank you to the NLNG Christian Fellowship the pastors and the leaders here, the military command within Boni here, and all who together, the men and the women of God, the host pastor of Living Faith, now the host pastor of Redeemed, and all the men and the women of God who have worked tirelessly to see that our brief stay here um, was successful and very impactful. I do not take your love and your honor for granted and in the name of Jesus I believe that when next we see it will be from glory to 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 glory in the name of Jesus Christ I love you dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. 
Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 